name is Harun Yahya. We have some copies of the book. I pay 13 and a quarter, or 13 and a half, whatever it says, and this price is on it. But brother is going to sell them for what, $10? Whatever. Yeah. You're like me, you just want the people to get the information, huh? But I'm telling you, this is a read, you got to have it. you got to do it. you got to do it, because you will laugh. I have another book. It's called The Lies My Teacher Told Me. This is written by a history professor. How many of you heard of that book? Good book. Excellent book. If you get a chance, you can go to uh, Borders Books and Music, or you can go to Barnes & Noble, one of those places, bookstops, something like that. Get this book. Read it. And see what happens when people get pressed against the wall and they're going to make up something because that's what they want you to believe. All right, real quick, I'm going to run through a couple of them. I've, I've used up a lot of my time in, in the introduction, but now I get to the point where we have some fun. Who discovered America? Real quick. Name? America. By the way, I have a microphone and you don't, but there are hundreds here, so I just need you to just get loud, okay? Who discovered America? Christopher Columbus. Okay, good. Very good. Very, very good. It's absolutely not true whatsoever, but I knew you were going to say that. I wanted you to say that. Christopher Columbus discovered America in what year? One month. October. He left in July. He left and he arrived here in October. Right? Right? No, it's not right because he didn't arrive here. He went to the Bahamas. His travel agent booked him in there. He got an off-season break. <laughs> Good. Excellent. He came again and again. And every time he came, he came where? The Bahamas. If you've been down there, you see why, man. The sands are beautiful. They used to have conch, if you ever had that. Delicious. But he never set one of his fat little feet on American soil. And I'm sorry. If you thought he discovered America, he didn't. But we need to say that in the West. We need to say that, because that's a part of a bigger philosophy that we're working on. And Darwin's theory is really not exactly what you think anyway. His strong suit was called the survival of the fittest of the species. Survival of the fittest of the species. That group with the strong ones would obviously overcome the handicapped ones or the poor ones, the down ones, and that would survive. When did he come up with this idea, and how did it come about? Do you know anything about this idea? He didn't actually say human beings came out of monkeys. Although he accepted the idea of evolution, it didn't bother him. That wasn't what he was talking about. He was very impressed about the way certain birds had developed their beaks. They were called finches on the Galapagos Islands off the coast of Ecuador. And when he was there, he observed that from island to island, according to the various ecological structure, in other words, if it's grain, or if it was a wooded area, or if it was a lot of rocks, that the birds living there, their beaks, fit that niche. They could eat there, they could survive there, because they were built like that. So when he went from island to island, he theorized that these birds had evolved from some primitive bird, and then this was a more advanced bird, and this is a more advanced bird, and so on. One of the things he kind of overlooked was they all were alive at the same time. So that's not evolution, is it? Not in the sense where something evolves over a period of time to something else, right? This is a different matter. As a matter of fact, in October, that same month, October, in 1998, there was a PBS special about the effects of El Nino. Who knows what's El Nino? You know what I'm talking about? That weather condition that changes things around the planet. Weird. What happened all of a sudden, there was a tremendous amount of water being released on the Galapagos Islands, and some of those islands changed their structure, and wind blew things from seeds from other areas, and so they had different plants that they had never had before, and they had a lot of foliage that they didn't used to have before, and others became more dry than they had before, and a lot of things changed. And in this special, they accidentally, oops, slipped and mentioned the fact that within six months, not six million years, as Darwin had supposed, but within six months, 
when the eggs hatched, the bills, the beaks of the birds had changed to be able to eat what was on their island. And they glossed over it and went on with the story, and I went, oh! I said, well, I didn't have a recorder. I would have loved to have caught that. Hello, Darwin, where are you? This is an amazing thing. You're saying this can happen that quick. How? How? According to the Muslim, this isn't possible. It can't happen unless Allah causes it to happen. He can do that because he can do what he wants to do. It's no problem for him. For us, how many people in this room, regardless of your religion, you believe there was somebody who was born about 2,000 years ago. He was born miraculous birth. He had no father, but he had a mother. Miraculous birth. And there was a man, and he claimed to be a prophet. How many agree with this idea? Raise your hand. How many don't agree with this idea? None of you. Okay. Why would these people believe something like that? Can you imagine this? Why would they accept an idea that a man can be born from a woman hmm, and no father? Uh, I don't think so. Do you? Doesn't sound right. But by the same token, when you start telling me humans go out of monkeys, that's also kind of weird because monkeys still exist. <laughs> Hello? I just told you about the birds. Monkeys still exist. And after you read this book and you find the lies that they've used to try to prove their point, you won't believe any more than I do that we came from monkeys. Where we came from, I'm not trying to prove that point tonight. But I'm telling you, when you see some of the things, give me an example. How many of you heard about the Piltdown Man hoax? You ever heard about that one? Happened in England a number of years ago. Somebody, some professor decided, you know, i got to prove my point. Now look what he did. He fabricated. He took part of a very old monkey, part of the skull, and some other parts of things from a human, and buried him in the ground, and then later come along and act like he discovered it. Now, you got to, you know, to be honest, you got to be a little bit sick to do something like that. Don't you agree? Isn't that a little bit weird? This is not a theory anymore. This is called deception. And people bought into it for a while and then they did some thinking about it and they did some studying and they did something called carbon dating. And they said, oops, doesn't work. First of all, even the monkey skull itself wasn't that old. It wasn't even a couple thousand years old. Not the millions of years that they tried to suppose it was. How many of you heard about Nebraska Man? Anybody heard about Nebraska Man? Yeah? That's a cool one. Listen to this. In the early part of the last century, they came up with, oh, we found the remains, the remains of Nebraska man. This proves that on the earth right here in the United States of America, millions of years ago, upright man was walking along, and here he is, and they drew pictures of him. They had a place in a the museum. They had drawings of it, and they had all kinds of, you know, uh, relics that they were showing in association with this big big discovery, the huge discovery that they had out here to show everybody, and you could go look at it and see this proof without any doubt, this was the missing link, the connection between who? Man and monkey. Wow. Do you know how many different ceases? Ceases, is that how you make it plural? Ceases. Yeah, be careful how to say that. <laughs> Because it gets pretty close to that, too. <laughs> How many people wrote articles on more than 50 based their dissertation on this subject of Alaska man? I mean, uh, Nebraska man. Could have been Alaska anyway, for all it's worth. Until in 19, I think it's 1939. Somebody observed that, gee whiz, these remains look strangely like some remains we have in another museum, let's go check these remains against those remains. And they were exactly the same without even a little bit of doubt. So these remains were the same as those. And guess what it was? Are you ready? One tooth. That's all it was. One tooth.